Hi everyone, so let's have a look at some of the causes of economic growth and what drives GDP growth forwards within economies. Now firstly, before we actually look at these factors, it's important to consider the actual economic uh, circumstances within a given economy. You want to have an environment where there's relatively low or stable inflation. Uh, now that helps build consumer and business confidence because it means that people can actually plan their expenditure for the future. And so that may well drive uh, further consumption and may drive business investment. So that's important, but you must have a government which has credibility and where you actually know exactly where you stand with them as a business or as a consumer. So for instance, that you're not suddenly going to face big tax increases and so on. Okay, so the economic circumstances of the economy are very important, but the two main driving forces that are most commonly cited as causes of economic growth, as you'll see throughout the course I've highlighted here. Firstly, aggregate demand, the total spending on goods and services within an economy. Now, aggregate demand uh, can be calculated from the total consumption, investment, government spending, and the balance of trade or exports minus imports there. Uh, okay, so any increase in any of these areas can be consumption, investment, government spending, uh, or exports over uh, the minus element there, the subtraction element of imports, because imports represent money leaving the economy, and leaving the circular flow of income, as we'll see. Uh, will help to drive forward economic growth. So if you can increase any of these areas, the theory goes uh, that it will help to actually drive forward economic growth. Now there is some disagreement between economists about this. For instance, monetarists argue that it, uh, this will only lead to inflation, but we'll get into that at a much later stage. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, uh, what we can see here is any increase in aggregate demand will increase economic growth. So it may occur in response to, for instance, reduced interest rates. Reduced interest rates may increase uh, consumption and investment as the cost of borrowing is reduced. Furthermore, uh, the reward for saving is also reduced and that may further encourage more consumption to take place. Uh, okay, so people are more happy to uh, borrow money when uh, interest rates are low, of course. Then we've got lower taxation. Now, this point about lower taxation will help to actually boost uh, consumption, theoretically, because it will increase disposable incomes of consumers. So that can also have a positive uh, impact. Then we've got the notion of increased government expenditure. So if the government carries out more or, or deeper spending, uh, that will drive uh, jobs and economic growth. Uh, next up, a depreciation of the currency. Now, a depreciation of the exchange rate will mean that buying imports will become more expensive. Meanwhile, the actual price of the exports in foreign markets will be cheaper. So it will help to drive forward uh, the demand for exports. In all likelihood, of course, it does depend on other areas such as uh, elasticities of demand for exports and imports, something that we'll look at further into the course. Uh, but it may well increase exports and decrease the level of imports entering a country because the imports will be more expensive uh, and the exports will be less expensive in foreign markets. Okay, and then what about increased consumer and business confidence? Well, if consumers uh, feel like they've got job security and that they know they've got jobs in place for the next 6, 12 months uh, and, or even permanently, then they're going to feel far more likely to actually engage in consumption and exactly the same for businesses, that if consumers feel confident, businesses will actually want to invest in capital goods, um, that is goods that are used to produce other goods and expand their operations perhaps. Okay, um, so that's our first area. Uh, now let's take a look at our second area and that really is about aggregate supply. Uh, now this can be determined both in the short run and the long run. If we look at the short run aggregate supply here, uh, it shows planned output holding uh, constant prices and current quality of factors of production. Uh, to holding those elements constant. 
Um, so these are our factor inputs, our land, labour, capital in particular, and holding those elements constant. Um, meanwhile, in the longer term, this is about planned output, which is unaffected by the price level and is driven by improvements in efficiency and improvements in the factor inputs. So if you're able to actually increase the quality of the land, labour uh, and capital, as well as the uh, entrepreneur perhaps, then that's going to help drive forward uh, economic growth in the longer term because the productive capacity of the economy will improve. Now that will not be reflected in the short run because it holds constant the price and current quality of factor inputs. But in the longer term, if you uh, carry out investment in capital goods, uh, that you invest in new machinery, new technology as a business, then you're far more likely, of course, to generate big improvements in the productivity of your uh, employees and, of course, your business overall. Uh, okay, what about improved education? Well, that will, of course, help to improve the labour force and it could even help to improve the managerial capabilities of the enterprise element within the factors uh, of production there. Uh, there could also be a general increase in the quality or quantity of factor inputs. So migration, uh, economic migration can help shift the supply, the long run aggregate supply curve to the right uh, as there's simply more workers available and it will mean that yes, wages could become slightly depressed in certain areas, in certain professions, uh, but it will help to actually boost the potential productive capacity of the economy. And finally, improve technology and infrastructure. So if you're forward thinking and you're uh, undertaking research and development and businesses are using their profits to invest in uh, innovative processes, then that will also help to generate productive gains for the economy as a whole. Okay, now some of these areas do overlap. So for instance, if uh, um, the government chooses to reduce taxation on uh, company profits, it may enable companies to actually undertake further uh, investment in research and development or invest more in capital goods. Uh, and of course, when it comes to government spending, well, government spending could be upon infrastructure projects such as uh, the controversial HS2 project. Uh, of High Speed Rail 2, which is uh, yeah hoping to link the North and the South economies and remove those regional disparities. Okay, uh, I hope that's useful, guys. Thanks a lot.